What dark facts do you know about the food industry? Story 1. I participated as kitchen staff in a rather top-flight restaurant. On a slow summer Sunday afternoon, the boss sent us down to the walk-in meat coolers to spray paint the rusted walls. We were instructed to not remove the contents of the cooler first, rather just shift the meat from one side of the cooler to the other. A coat of silver spray paint will come off during cooking. Story 2. The amount of waste thrown away every single day by grocery stores. I worked in the meat department of a decently sized grocery store, and the waste there was nauseating. I kid you not, we would throw away an industrial-sized garbage bin worth of meat, fish, and poultry every single day. The expiration dates dictated everything, which is obviously a sensible policy to have, but they wouldn't do anything about it. They wouldn't donate it, let employees take it home, or make adjustments to the orders so we wouldn't have to throw away so much. The reasoning was always, better have too much than not enough, which I guess makes a little sense, but when I'm throwing away dozens of pounds of tenderloins, center-cut fish, and shellfish per night, it's too much. Mind you, this is one department of one grocery store. Sorry for the rant, but I feel like it needed to be said. Story 3. In my country, buffets often sell spoiled food. Like, if the employees see mold on top of the sour cream, they just scrape it down and continue selling it. Also, if they sell cooked meat, they often leave them on the counter for days and add some oil to it every morning to look fresh. Story 4. So odd to see all of the comments that chain places are dirty. On the weekends, I work as a server in the lounge of Boston Pizza, Canadian chain, not sure if there are any in the States. And when I started working there, I was seriously impressed with the cleanliness procedures. For example, Parmesan and chili containers are emptied and cleaned every night, as well as salt and pepper shakers. Kitchen protocols are very clean and organized as well. Story 5. Grocery distribution warehouses are often extremely filthy and rarely cleaned. Wash anything canned, bottled, or jarred. They're filthy as hell, covered in microplastics, rotten food, mouse p bird etc. I used to do maintenance on conveyor systems for a major U.S. chain, and they just send flying down the conveyors so fast that it's fairly common for glass to shatter because of the vibrations, food to fall off, etc. I saw bats, birds, and mice in that facility, but it was within the tolerance of their health policy. Also saw people that were sick, sneezing and coughing on products. Never saw a floor scrubber go through the warehouse the entire three months I worked there, and I was doing alternating double shifts. The only time I saw a broom was if there was shattered glass. Story 6. As a former chef, I've got to say that I've never seen any of the horrible stuff mentioned here over my career, mostly higher-end and fine dining establishments. We, on occasion, would have things like frozen airline chicken breasts brought in. But other than that, we did all prep and cooking by hand with fresh ingredients from mostly local purveyors when possible. We also broke down and deep cleaned every night from the ranges to the floors to the wells to the vents. Every night. Myself and the staff have always taken this shit very seriously, and it's always disappointing when you hear of this kind of behavior. Do better, people. Story 7. It's more like a misleading labeling. No sugar, right? Wrong. If you read ingredients on a lot of the packaging, it will say things like maltodextrin and dextrose. That's actually sugar. Because of regulation, they only have to label it's no sugar and people think it's healthy. Tic Tacs are a lie. They set the serving size to one, I think, and because it's less than half a gram of sugar, they can legally say it's zero calories and zero grams of sugar. When in reality, Tic Tacs are something like 94.5% sugar or some crazy shit like that. Story 8. Worked in a pepperoni factory for 20 plus years ago as an accountant. Found that the more MSP in the bill of materials, the lower quality and cheaper the product. Looking at the stuff, it looked kind of like an old square crumbly eraser, if you remember those. So I asked what MSP was. It's mechanically separated pork. When I asked what that means, they told me that after all the good meat is cut off of a pig, a power washer is used to blast the remaining flesh off the carcass. That's scooped up, dried out, and packaged as MSP. 
Enjoy your next cheap pepperoni pizza. Story 9. I've been in hundreds of kitchens, and I can say, generally, the super popular local favorite places to eat are disgusting. The buildings are falling apart. The food is outdated. The walls, ceilings, and floors are alive with all kinds of bugs and rodents. Hopefully, this is just my area and not widespread throughout the country. Story 10. Don't eat at Uno's. I worked BOH in salad and soup prep. I saw tons of trays of veggies accidentally dropped on the floor, walked over, and picked back up with nary a rinse. The chili stays in the pot for days on end, and they just add more water and beans. I saw unsavory things working at Friendly's too. Story 11. Here's a good one. Health department regulations are easily skirted around, especially in the Chinese food industry, at least in the San Francisco Bay Area. But as I've been told, everywhere around the U.S. as well. If a restaurant fails a health inspection, they usually have 30 to 60 days to correct it. After 60 days, they visit again, and if that restaurant fails again, they can get shut down. However, if the restaurant changes ownership in that time, they get another year before being inspected again. So a lot of places will just shift ownership again and again throughout their family members, never even bringing the restaurant up to code. It happens often, and it's something the health department denies again and again and they even retaliate heavily against people who are outspoken against them. I've seen health inspectors leave low boy doors open for 10 minutes and then take their temps. Once it's above 40, you're docked. Health departments are corrupt as shit. Heard rumors about bribes and all the other political corruption that plagues every aspect of the American legal system, but haven't seen anything in person besides that. Story 12. Escargot. Ugh. Be wary. Those exotic-looking shells are reused many times. After being sent through the dishwasher, sometimes extra care is taken to make sure the soap hasn't settled inside the shell. The snail meat itself comes from a can and is stuffed into the shells. I had a fabulous escargot served in a shallow ceramic crock. I haven't had escargot any other way in a restaurant. I used to have ceramic snail shells at home, but I scrubbed those with a small brush. I haven't had escargot in a long time. And yeah, be careful with the canned snails. If they're soft or discolored, do not eat. Story 13. Store brand food is identical to similar nationally advertised and distributed brands. One of my college summer jobs was at a grocery chain's industrial bakery. We used to make hundreds of thousands of hot dog and burger rolls for sale at our local stores. On summer holiday weekends, we also were subcontracted to make hundreds of batches for a national brand. Same recipe, same ingredients, same bakers, but different bags with much higher prices printed on them. Story 14. Everywhere food gets made is filthy. You can't even understand until you've seen it. I've worked at water treatment plants where they handle all the human I'd rather eat lunch outside there than in most of the production areas and most of the food plants I've worked. I have got some horror stories. Story 15. McDonald's isn't as bad as you think and are actually really adamant about food quality. At least a decade ago, I was surprised at how much care and handling happens in the kitchen. The good ones. It was my first job, and I thought I was going into the nightmares these types of subs attract, but was humbly surprised that it was as clean as it was. I'd have to say the dirtiest part of the store was probably the grout in between the tiles. But even then, those were done at least every two weeks, or monthly. Story 16. When the green M&M redesign debacle was going on, it was because they were being sued by former child African slaves from the Ivory Coast that the chocolate company uses. So they pushed the stupid story of the redesign of a fictitious commercial character to focus attention on that, instead of the fact they were being sued by former child African slaves. Story 17. Chef from America. You don't even want to know. I'm going to be honest, I just assume now that if I don't make it with my own two hands, it's not safe to eat. I've seen everything, from plastic wrap to sweat to mold to cleaning acids being served to people. And there's more than that. That's the arguably less nasty thing. Obviously, that's untrue. Not every single thing you eat is unsafe. Probably not half, 
Maybe half if you eat a lot of fast food, but for sure 20% of it. Anyway, you just never know, and I've seen way too much. I don't trust restaurants, be it fast food or fine dining, unless I know someone who works there and they tell me it's fine. Story 18. That we can't give newly expired food to the homeless. There was a single case of a homeless person getting food poisoning from donated food in the USA, and the food industry used that as a reason to make it illegal. There is no reason for this other than so more people will be hungry and buy more food. Story 19. Former chef here. Never send food back. Unless, of course, the chicken is still raw, or that kind of problem. The daily specials are fridge cleanouts. Don't order fish on a Tuesday unless the establishment is a seafood restaurant. Last but not least, try not to alter the menu and food to suit your taste. Chefs and owners work very hard to create menus and recipes. And they get very upset when you ask for no ham in the chicken cordon bleu. Story 20. That mechanically separated meat has now been replaced with a technological advancement to remove the label. But at the end of the day, it's essentially the same thing. Listeria is a major concern, and lots of plants have issues with it. But they don't find it on food often at all, so you don't hear much about it. Ready to eat and ready to cook are the difference between cleanliness and testing at plants. Ready to eat has a much stricter testing policy. Major companies determine their own health standards. The USDA and FDA only enforce company standards and do not have many universally recognized federal health standards. Hogs, cattle, and poultry are sprayed or soaked with chlorinated water as well as other chemicals to kill bacteria. However, this reduces shrinkage by adding water weight to the meat. Once it's cooked, that water weight is removed, and a 16-ounce steak will be the equivalent of a 12-ounce. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, except for the price you pay for the water. The number of animals killed to support the human population is unbelievable. I have personally worked at both beef kill plants in Dodge City, Kansas. In those two plants alone, 10,000 head of cattle are killed every day. Sanderson Farms, which I have also worked at, between all their chickens, kill over 1 million chickens per day and over 500 million per year. I could go on, but overall, I think this all stems from the lack of small local farmers. Source. I am an industrial refrigeration guy who specializes in anhydrous ammonia refrigeration. Story 21. If bananas ripen and produce brown or black spots all over them and the stem is still green or yellow, they're chemically ripened, not organic. If bananas ripen with the stem turning brown or black without spots all over the bananas, they're naturally ripened, organic. Also, the produce food label stickers with the numbers can also tell you which foods are organic and which ones are not. Story 22. The onion soup you're eating now was started in a huge vat the prior night. The chef started it at the end of shift and left. Then, the cleaning crew came along and cleaned the stove and the vents and fans above the stove using a powerful corrosive degreaser chemical. The soup vat isn't covered. Also, if your steak tastes like rubber, it's because the cleaner's sneakers melt a bit while standing on the stovetop. Griddle or char grill to clean the vents fans. Story 23. Pizza chains are so short-staffed, almost no hands get washed. The corporation didn't believe me. During their inspection, I told them to watch me work as I helped customers, took phone orders, and cooked. Once it got busy, I made a point to wash my hands as health code required. After my 13th interruption on the first large order of the night during my 13th trip to the hand-washing sink, they told me I could return to making pizza with my bare hands after handling money because everything was going to be baked. What about the fresh tomatoes and basil that's on two-thirds of the menu? It's not a problem. Story 24. The vast amount of waste in the industry. There is so much food wasted at every restaurant. Most places I've worked have been really clean. However, please use a straw. Servers simply do not wash their hands as much as the kitchen staff, and they are the ones that bring you their drinks. They will take things to the dish pit and turn right around to grab your cup or food and bring it to you without even looking at one of the many hand sinks on their way out. Likely, the ice machine is dirty. Not just the bin, but the inside where the water sits and freezes. 
I always make it a point to clean it, but I've noticed I'm generally the only one anywhere I work that does so. Rampant drug and alcohol abuse. It's everywhere. The amount of crying that goes on behind closed doors because you were a total asshole to your server. I've seen grown adults red-faced yell at children at their first job. It's rampant, and it's been far worse since COVID, and is by far the most disgusting thing I've seen in the industry. Please be kind. Mistakes happen. Any reputable place will fix them. Tip your server. Story 25. Live in an area that produces enormous amounts of food for wholesale. Seafood, beef, poultry, pork, vegetables, fruit, you name it. Worked in the industry. I provided labor for those places. And in my younger years, I was labor for these places. Did site safety inspections throughout the region. Got to know the management of every processing plant in a five-county area. Dozens of food plants. One became EU certified. One. That means that dozens of American plants making food for wholesale in restaurants and supermarkets are not deemed worthy to sell their products in New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the UK, or all of Europe. It we make is only fit for Americans. The rest of the world says, no thanks, we have standards. Story 26. Worked at a supermarket in the meat seafood department. Was pretty surprised by how much gets thrown away. I'm talking scraps of fat, meat, bones, stuff that is perfectly edible, but we don't have the time nor the financial incentive to process into something salable, as well as meat that's been sitting in the display case too long, and pre-packaged stuff that's past the sell-by. On average, this would add up to 9 full 55-gallon trash cans of would-be food every week, just from one meat department in one supermarket. Story 27 some expired food is served, mostly because someone forgot to put a label or covered the item's expiration date with said label. Everyone is too lazy to actually check. At times, items have random dates on labels just to pass inspection. There was a cheesecake stored in one of the fridges at my old workplace that was there for more than a year. Before I started work, that thing was there. I left the place and that shit was still in the same spot with the amount of pieces left. This is mostly for dine-in types. When your food is sent back to the kitchen because you wanted something about it changed, they don't remake your dish unless the order was entirely wrong or it's a situation involving allergies. Not all employees are concerned about how clean the food is. Sometimes, they will drop the ingredients or dish by accident and just pick it up and make it look like nothing happened. And the silverware at dine-ins doesn't always get fully cleaned. Story 28. American slaughterhouses fought and lobbied against any health and safety standards for their entire existence. In the 70s, McDonald's simply said they wouldn't buy meat that didn't fit their health standards. This made the big suppliers fold almost immediately and start complying. It's never about worker conditions, though. They don't care if a migrant worker loses a hand, but will test to make sure that hand doesn't end up in your meat slurry. Story 29. A lot of dietary guidelines in the U.S. were created on the basis of lobbying rather than research. Meat, eggs, and raw milk are vilified without evidence. Meanwhile, refined grains are touted as healthy. Saturated fats are demonized, while highly processed seed oils are promoted as heart-healthy. Food dyes are allowed, despite wreaking havoc on hormones and being banned in the rest of the world. Story 30. Dishes really aren't clean when you get them. I worked at a resort in northern Canada as a dishwasher. The plates and utensils were known to not be very clean. All of the staff, including the managers, would eat off of paper plates with plastic forks, knives, and cups to eat at lunch. We would usually eat the food that wasn't eaten at the buffet during breakfast. This may have been because they didn't want us to break the dishes. But I think it's because they know how the plates really aren't that clean. We put them through the dishwasher, and I really did my best to make sure all the plates were clean, but washing each dish takes forever by hand. So after running the plates through the dishwasher once, we wiped down the leftover gunk by hand. Eggs, cheese, meat juice, oatmeal, mashed potatoes, and other things were all crusted on, so we would just wipe them off. We wouldn't be scolded or given a talk if we wiped off a whole piece of bacon, but we would receive a warning if we did not clean our dishes fast enough. Mind you, 
This place claims to have halal, vegetarian, and kosher substitutes, but in the end, they're all on the same plate as a piece of bacon. Also, when we ran out of rubber gloves, we would wipe them off with our hands. Yeah. Also, this place is about $1,000 a night, so I can't even imagine what other restaurants do to their dishes. Story 31. As someone who worked in a grocery store deli in high school, you should never, and I mean never, buy anything from a grocery store deli. Most of the people I worked with couldn't follow basic sanitation standards, like washing their hands, changing their gloves, not slicing meat and cheese on the same slicer, and wouldn't keep the expiration dates with the open meats and cheeses. So there was literally no way of knowing when something was past the expiration date. I'm also convinced we sold food that probably had Windex in it, since people would just spray it all over the glass windows on the display case. No one can convince me it wasn't getting into the food in between the windows. 